Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna talk about how to use an airbrush for lure painting and we're starting right now. So guys, first of all, why an airbrush? Why not a pencil and just on paint? Well, an airbrush you can do so much more than you can do with a pencil and paint. You can layer colors on top of each other and make them darker. You can uh, you can do shading with an airbrush, you can use stencils, you can use a mesh, you can shoot through a lot of stuff to get all these different kind of effects. So the possibilities with an airbrush are huge. Now if we look at an airbrush then what kind of airbrushes do we have? Now we have gravity feed airbrushes like this one, we have siphon feed airbrushes which have those have the little paint bucket or little paint uh, bottle on the underside of an airbrush like so and then you can you can just screw them on and then paint like this we're gonna focus mainly on the most commonly used airbrush for lure painting which is a gravity feed airbrush these airbrushes are most often dual action you also have single action it's very simple guys the difference is just with a single action you only have to do one thing to make the paint come out and with a dual action you have to do two actions to get the paint out so this is a dual action and for lure painting we want to have a dual action so a gravity feed dual action airbrush how does that work just to show you guys i screw the, the needle cap off this is a needle protection cap it protects the needle which is inside the entire airbrush it runs all the way until the end now what's, what does this needle do i will show you guys that in a drawing if we would take our airbrush and we would cut it in half and we would look only at the tip of the airbrush then it looks like a cone shaped head very simple this is how this this very tip looks if we cut it in half and would look inside and now the needle the needle runs through the airbrush all the way just like so very simple and that needle is actually thick enough to block the pad so With the airbrush right now in relaxed position it blocks the pad and when I pull this trigger backwards I'm actually gonna pull the needle away which results in that you actually create like this a little bit of room here and there and here paint is gonna fly through so the further we pull back the more paint comes out and the less we pull back the littler paint comes out like a very small line like this so that is how an airbrush works it's very simple now a dual action has two actions first of all first action is when I press this trigger down as you can see air comes out and when I pull it backwards now paint is going to come out is going to come out so that's how a dual action work if you ha would have a single action you would just press it down and the paint will come out like, like so it will all happen in one action that's how it that's the difference between a dual action and a single action so a dual action what's what's the good thing about a dual action it gives us a lot more control we can first of all use as little paint as we want so you can also just shade a little bit like so and shoot very little paint and that is because the dual action gives you much more control and you can decide how much paint you want to shoot through the airbrush now as you can see on my airbrush I don't have the needle cap on there the needle protection cap because um, I like to paint without um, and that's especially when I'm doing finer details then uh, I can go closer with my needle and this will give me smaller and finer lines but also when I have tip dry, which means when there's paint dried onto the needle, I can just simply pinch it off with my uh, fingertip, with my, with my nails. And then I can spray again. So tip dry is something you're going to have. It's something that every airbrusher has now and, now and then. So um, would I recommend to use, to use an airbrush without the needle cap? Not really, especially if you're new, because if you drop this, 
then your needle will get bent and then either you can fix it yourself or you have to buy a new needle because uh, a bent needle um, causes a lot of problems so it's up to you if you want to use the needle cap or not I prefer to shoot without a needle cap but as a beginner it might be a good idea to start with the needle cap on you can always screw it off and on later it's no problem now if you're just starting out airbrushing um, I know many people are super excited and they start painting on lures right away and there's nothing wrong with that of course if you if you can't wait and wanna start painting lures sure go ahead and practice on some lures but I always recommend uh, people I teach how to airbrush is start off with getting to know your airbrush a little bit start off with just taking a piece of paper put a little paint in your airbrush use a little bit of reducer about 10 percent mix that up a little and then start to shoot just on the paper just you know just get to know how this how this thing works just start to get a feel for how does an airbrush work and start to get a little bit of control over there try some fine lines try a little bit of uh, faded lines try to shoot with a little bit of paint try to shoot with much paint just to get a feel how that airbrush works because your first lures probably are not going to turn out that great if you take an airbrush and just start shooting on it because you don't have the feel yet you don't know how to control an airbrush yet so practicing a little bit of paper it's not a waste not at all it's gonna learn you a lot in a very short time and you can also do a few exercises to practice your airbrushing so this first exercise is meant to learn you to control how much paint is flowing through your airbrush and learns you to uh, put on different shades of colors which is when you want to start lure painting and you want to get a little bit better it is important to know how to do that so it's very simple you're just gonna dry, try to start with a little line just straight which can be a little darker start with a little line just straight and then you're gonna try to put a line just next to it but it's gonna be a little lighter a little less paint so if you try that again put a darker line first just slightly try to fade out that line and it gives you a lot of it will teach you how to control your paint flow and it will teach you how to do shading and uh, layering lighter colors on top of each other it's gonna help you a lot in the long run trying to practice this a little bit another good thing to learn is if you just put two lines across of each other and you're gonna try to paint lines in between these lines by just passing these lines so I'm, I'm not starting at the beginning of this line I'm actually starting with my air behind this line and as I'm passing through I will start let the paint come through at the line I will keep that paint coming through and I will stop here at this line with the paint flow with my air pressure still on and I will pass this I'm gonna do this very slow let's do this again so paint on I'm shooting here so no paint is coming out right now when I get close to my line I start shooting and stop again and just try to shoot between these lines while passing the whole way through across the entire paper keeping your air pressure on this is very important why is this very important to learn this exercise teaches you two things it's gonna teach you when to start and stop with your paint to paint just there where you want it to paint but also it's gonna learn you how to control your air pressure because it is super important and I cannot state this enough guys it's super important not to release your air pressure at this moment not to release your air pressure when you want the paint to stop flowing 
you stop you stop the paint flow but you keep the air pressure on just for a split second and that's because there always will be a little bit paint left when you pull the needle when you release the needle there's always going to be a little bit of paint left and that needs to come true because if you stop the air pressure simultaneously with the paint flow then you're going to get a lot more tip dry and you might have a, a splatters the next time you put your air pressure on again so never stop your paint flow and your air pressure simultaneously always stop your paint flow first and a split second later then you stop your air pressure I'll do this one more time guys start air pressure gonna make a fi fine line start air pressure So now my paint is coming out. I stopped my paint, but I'm still shooting air. Now this was a very slow motion. If we want to do this fast, then you can do it like this. But try it very slowly first. It's not a waste of paint. It's going to learn you a lot and it's going to avoid a lot of problems in the future gonna get a little bit of tip dry off here as you can see because of course tip dry is something that can happen this is very good so this is very good for learning how to start and stop with your paint but also it's gonna learn you how to control your air pressure now a very important thing to know guys is when you have a small compressor which needs to work a lot if you're shooting a lot of air all the time it's important to um, do it only a split second because if you do it like me, like keeping the air pressure the whole time while I'm shooting, like so, if you have a very small compressor, it's gonna need to work very hard to maintain that air pressure for you. And it might get overheated. And if it gets overheated, you can get condensation on the inside of the tank and it's gonna shoot out water actually through your air brush, which comes all the way through the hose and then through the air brush. It's it's no way to avoid it. You can have a, a, a water filter here, but still you might have moisture coming all the way through because it's just so much water that shoots through because of the condensation, because your compressor is shooting warm air and that's uh, it's gonna condensate. So if you have a small compressor, then make sure to stop a split second after losing the paint. Like so. Doesn't need more than that, but just you stop paint and you stop the air just right after but not simultaneously not like this I'm gonna do how you should not do it now you can see all the splattering hope you can see that all that splattering is because I stopped my air and paint sim simultaneously so it builds up paint right on the needle. I also got a lot of tip dry right now. It's gonna cause me a lot of problems. I also will have spatters on my lure which I don't want and these are impossible to get off. So it's super important guys keep that air pressure on just a split second after you release the needle. I don't want to hear this this clicking sound. I don't want to hear it because it's gonna cause you a lot of problems in the future. So it's super important. Air pressure on, paint flow, stop paint flow, stop air pressure. Not this. Air pressure, paint, stop, stop. Super important. A very similar exercise. Just put two lines and now you're gonna try to put some fine lines between these lines. Like so. This is going to teach you how to do fine lining, fine detailing, all the fine stuff because it's super important to know how to do this. For If you want to get better at lure painting, it's super important you can do this. Okay, so how, how do I paint a fine line? First of all, it's about getting close to your object. The closer you go, the smaller the line will be. The further away 
the tick area line will be. So close by. It's going to give you fine lines. So it's just an easy exercise to learn to control your airbrush, knowing what kind of tick thickness you get in lines by using the distance between your object and the airbrush. Another great exercise is put some dots. Very simple, just start up close, start shooting paint and as you move away that dot is going to get bigger. So try to put some bigger dots, try to put some some very small dots. Super easy. But this is just going to give you a feel how to put rounder shading if you want to do a trout pattern or anything and you want to just put the dots on there you don't have a stencil and you want just a few dots on there you can might as well just use the airbrush and just you know shoot just to shoot very small dots so it's really good to do this exercise as well just put some small dots on a piece of paper it's gonna learn you a lot and again it's gonna be super useful if you know how to do this right next subject how to use stencils with an airbrush well even that is very useful to just practice on a little piece of paper if you got a stencil you bought one or you made one does make a difference practice with it on paper just you know see what it does see what kind of effects you can achieve with it now there's two things you can do with a stencil you can either just put it against your object and I shoot paint on it or you can hold a, you can keep a little distance you see what I got this is the same pattern I shot now this this is close to the object and this is a little further away and this gives me more faded texture while these are very crisp lines everywhere so depending on the effect you want to do you can either put the stencil on your object you get these nice fine crisp lines or if you're doing um, if you want to do have if you want to have a faded effect play a little with this on a piece of paper it's gonna teach you tons of stuff and the same goes for mesh if you're using a mesh you're wrapping your lure it is super important it actually touches your object it touches your lure like so. If it doesn't touch your lure, you see, again, same as this, you get a much more faded effect. So if you want that very crisp and clear pattern, make sure that your mesh is touching your lure all the way around, or at least everywhere where you want to spray paint. Another fun thing you can do with mesh, and even with stencils if you want to, but it's commonly used with mesh. Uh, is shoot at an angle. What's the difference? As you can see, I shot right straight onto my stencil here. Well, now next to the lure, next to that, I'm gonna shoot at an angle. So what happens here is that your paint actually flies a little bit over the mesh. And it's not gonna cover the entire area. So you get these thicker white lines and it's a totally different kind of texture. So you can also play a little with that. You can use different colors at different angles to get different effects. But just take a piece of paper and play around with it. It's going to teach you a lot. It's going to give you a lot more confidence again. And it's going to help you knowing what you're doing when you're painting your lure. Let us also quickly talk about the quality of an airbrush. Now, as a beginner, guys... I do not advise you to buy the best, most expensive airbrush on there because especially as a beginner it's not going to make a lot of difference. 
it all comes it all comes down to this when you're airbrushing there are a lot of things that have an influence on how well your airbrush and your paint and everything together is performing so it's not only depending on the quality of the airbrush but it also depends on the quality of paint you're using the medium you're using to um, uh, lengthen your paint the reducer you're using and the air pressure you're using and then the climate also has an effect first of all don't blame your paint because all the well-known brands they perform very good I'm not gonna give any names but I know there are a few brands who get a lot of complaints from people it's just because they are using the paint wrong it's very important to use the right amount of air pressure combined with reducer I got more on that in a different video I think it's very important for you guys to know that you can buy a very cheap airbrush to begin with it's not gonna affect your painting that much but if you do want to know how I started I started off with a very cheap airbrush the same kind as they sell on Wish I bought it somewhere else but it's the same kind as from Wish and I upgraded this airbrush after about two or three months then I went to an Iwata Niu it's a still a cheaper airbrush but it's a lot better what's the difference well first of all the quality of the needle is, is better so you're gonna have less dip dry that's that's a fact also your fine lining is gonna be better and the overall quality of the airbrush is gonna be much better so it's gonna last you longer as well I still use the Neo for uh, base coating everything but it's because it's a great airbrush um, after the Neo, I upgraded to an Eclipse, Iwata Eclipse, one of the most famous airbrushes for lure painting and other paintings. It's just such a durable and easy to clean airbrush. And after that, I bought myself also recently a Micron, Iwata Micron. I also airbrush a little on, uh, on other things, on canvases and such. So I mainly use that one for only canvases. It's not really... Well, you can use it for detailing on lures, but I don't use that that often for lure painting so all I can say to you guys is experiment enough with air pressure and the amount of reducer it's super important to find your um, your way in using these things because it is different for everybody so experiment with that instead of blaming your equipment or the paint because most of the time guys it's not the equipment's fault it's not the paint's fault is actually your fault right and when we're talking about needle sizes also very important uh, I always advise people to buy a 0.35 needle about that size uh, 0.4 is good as well especially for beginners if you can find a 3.5 or a 3 a 0.3 needle that also is good enough um, but a 0.35 is just in the middle of that. It still shoots metallics and pearls very easily. So the paints with a little bit of bigger pigments in there, it still shoots that as well. So around that range is what I advise to buy. You can also start off with a 5, with a 0.5 needle, of course. It's just going to be harder to do smaller areas and detailing because the needle is getting bigger. So your lines are getting thicker as well. There are so many things that affect the way you and your airbrush are performing together that it's a learning process and it's going to take a time. It's going to take a while to uh, learn all these different kind of paints, reduction ratios, uh, air pressures, and then you got the different airbrushes and everything and the different brands of paint. So, and then you got the climate as well. If you're painting on a summer day or it's late autumn or it's winter, it's all different and all affects your airbrushing so it's just a matter of time to learn all these things it's don't expect yourself to be a pro artist tomorrow because it takes time one more super great tip guys is that fish don't care if your lures are beautiful or not it's only people who care fish don't see flaws fish don't see details especially when the lure is moving and everything they don't they just see a shade so keep that in mind don't expect to make super beautiful lures and catch more fish with them as just a simple redhead pattern which might produce more fish on that day. If you have any questions regarding airbrushing or fishing lures, 
leave them in the comments down below and I will be happy to help you guys. Now if you want to know more about what paint you should use for lure painting then I have a great video for you right here. And if you want to know more about reducing your paint and a little bit more about air pressures and such then I have a great video for you right here. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you learned something and see you next time. Bye bye!